In the world today, we are facing a tremendous crisis with water, water availability, safe drinking water, and also uh, we have a big problem with sanitation. There are 2.5 billion people in the world that they don't have access to sanitation. Traditionally, uh, what societies have done for uh, millennia is take water from a pristine source, use it, and then discharge it away from the population. And so we've done this, even to, we do this today. It's, it's the centerpiece of most engineered water infrastructure. And the approach or the paradigm we're trying to shift toward is having uh, an engineered water cycle that's more of a closed loop, not only for water, but also for nutrients, and to try and close that loop in a way that's energy positive or, or more sustainable for society. We first of all believe that we are not going to be very successful in providing safe drinking water if we do not solve the sanitation problem first. It makes a lot of sense that we address that because then the water in nature is not going to get contaminated. We want to do research and, and structure education around the challenges we're trying to solve rather than the disciplines we're using to solve them. So we are actually developing alternative new revolutionary methods to look at sanitation in which rather than using money to get rid of a waste and in places in the developing world they don't have those resources they're not going to do it. So we don't want it to copy what we do. Eh? What we want is actually to look at technologies that will allow us to obtain the energy. So actually, all of a sudden, dealing with sanitation will be viewed as being a te technologies that will be able to provide income. If we focus on a developing community context, uh, we have the advantage of not being locked into that centralized infrastructure, that old infrastructure. And so we can really think more outside the box and, and innovate in a way that re removes a lot of the constraints that traditionally uh, limit our ability to, to develop novel technologies. So how are we going to change? Where is the engineering? Where is the State Global Water Institute? What are our students? What are they doing to solve this problem? We need to look at sanitation from a different perspective. We need to look at sanitation, uh, at, the, at the solutions for, sanit for providing sanitation as a means to uh, have resources coming out. So if we think about you know, uh, fecal matter, uh, have uh, um, and urine, uh, is actually uh, organic matter. You have uh, nitrogen, you have phosphorus, uh, and this is actually has a very high value. It's just that we have, there is a stigma in society, right? We like to flush and not to know anything else about it. Um, because it is a waste, we want to destroy it um, before we return that water back to nature. Well, that costs us a lot of money. In the order of three to four percent of the energy that we use in the United States, we actually use to actually take care of this sanitation problem and wastewater treatment. Uh, it's very expensive, but if you think about it, we're using energy that costs us a lot of money to destroy an energy source. And so if we focus in that context, it gives developing communities the opportunity to leapfrog over the technologies that we've used. And the, one of the most prominent examples is if you look at telephones, like they don't have, in, in many developing countries, they don't have telephone poles and, and landlines because cell phones took over and uh, they were they have a clear value proposition and people adopted them in many places. Um, well, for sanitation and water, that infrastructure is not there. So if we can develop technologies that are uh, decentralized, that can be easily deployed and have a clear value uh, to, to communities, then we have the opportunity to learn from in those contexts and then bring that kind of knowledge back to places like the U.S. So this is, these are the technologies that our students are developing. The Safe Global Water Institute, in addition to having grad students that are doing research and some undergraduates that joined us also to do research. We also want to make sure that generations of students uh, that are doing, you know, other, our undergraduate studies get exposed to that. And, uh, you know, we give, we, I have a course in which the students actually, uh, with our graduate students, we all go to Africa, visit the communities where they have these problems, understand uh, not just the technical challenges uh, and, and do a lot of uh, field work, uh, analytical work, but also try to understand the communities that we're trying to des design these processes, understand their culture, uh, you know, the economic means that they have, 
and uh, since that you know could be barriers, even if we think that we may have a very good idea, if we don't we don't learn these aspects of uh, the communities, we may not have success in the technologies being ever implemented. Getting to work with the students here at Illinois has been really tremendous, and the students are not only of like the highest possible caliber, but it's also the passion and drive that they have to impact the world in a positive way, and so. At Illinois, we have, uh, through our interdisciplinary programs and, and other research opportunities on campus, we have the opportunity to find the intersection between this global impact, but also fundamental science and research that lets them, that positions them to be leaders uh, in developing solutions for the 21st century.